Hello, welcome to Sochi Concepts, the show about achieving competitive success and understanding your challenges and opportunities in those challenges of um, understanding your strategic position and advancing that unique position. I'm your host, Mr. Balderdash. Today, we're going to be talking about information gathering. Hey everyone, the name is Mr. Balderdash. Get ready to learn a little about Sun Tzu. This show will break down nine basic principles of a success model. Get ready to find opportunities in your problems. We can get more of life by understanding positions. Then we listen, aim, move, and claim for the rest. Three, two, one, hit it! strategy just for you. Now back in 2.0 I talked about a broad perspective comes from systematic information gathering. Basically uh, gathering information in a very organized way and how exactly do we do that? Well first of all how we gather information determines uh, how we see the world and how we see success ultimately because the information that we gather forms our perspective and our perspective ultimately shapes how we compare positions and of course the comparison positions is the definition of success right there so that all goes back to information thing is is that Sun Tzu teaches that information is more more important than money even more important than time time is probably our second most important resource and why is it <laughs> well first of all because it helps us better understand how we can better use our time better use our money or any other resource as well as find hidden ways to use these resources hidden resources themselves so information is very valuable in that aspect so we have to be very important how we get information the second thing about information is that without getting a broad perspective what we don't see is broad <clears throat> really our broad possibilities and the strict limitations in achieving those possibilities is what we end up having and so by getting a broad perspective we can see the kinds of opportunities that we have the various kinds as well as um, <clears throat> understanding the strict limitations of the things that you have to do to achieve those possibilities so uh, first of all the thing is that we have to identify what kinds of success is you know most important the thing is that success comes in different dimensions for example in business it's not just about um, market share it's also about profitability it's about all these different things we by gathering information we find the different dimensions of success and find out which one we're going for and aiming for um, so anyway there's three different challenges that basic challenges that we face and of course with those challenges we have three basic opportunities so first of all the challenge is is quality of information better quality information how do we get better quality now in the last video it sounds, it sounds kinda weird because in the last video I talk about how to make you know how to really make a decisions despite the fact that information can be corrupted and limited in a variety of ways well, the thing is, is that we can get better information and we should if we can uh... really the issue that we're facing what holds us back is the challenge of quantity versus quality what i'm talking about here is the fact that the thing is we can really have two types of uh, contact network so to speak uh, which I'll actually get about in 2.4 but anyway for now we can have a nice broad wide base of contacts or we can have a nice small base of contacts what's the difference well the difference is the broad base of contacts you get more information but you can't invest too much time in any of those relationships because the thing is it's about personal relationships we actually have to have relationships with people to get information uh, information comes from our relationships with people not from computers or any of those other things and so with that we can definitely spend time with people but it's very limited because we're trying to have regular contact with a lot of people the second thing when it comes to that is we can have a smaller group of people and we can get more deeper information from having deeper relationships but we're getting less information the thing about it is how we have to look at it is that success is a needle in a haystack we have to find that needle to find the success that we want the thing is is that more information is actually more hay. Um, why is that? Well, the thing is that we need to find the right kinds of people that give us the right kinds of information, but it's not just about getting information from people. It's also about people have unique perspectives and process situations in their own ways. Share with them different aspects about your situation or things that you're facing. They'll find hidden blind spots you didn't see there. 
they'll find hidden opportunities you didn't see there. That's what it's about, is finding those hidden opportunities that only talking to real people can give you. Um, and that's the thing about our personal relationships. That's how we're free is when we um, <clears throat> really use the mind, we're really harnessing the minds of people in this. Uh, the second challenge that we face is really a flood of information. We don't want to drown in a flood of information. <laughs> Um, really, there's two basic problems we have when it comes to information, either a drought or a flood of information. A drought comes from not using the Warriors rules and not using any of these things to uh, get information. A flood of information really happens when we're doing those things. It creates its own problem, though. How do we get past that problem? Well, the thing is, is that uh, we know that information leads to our decisions. It shapes how we make decisions. The thing is, is that there's really two ways we can go about this. First of all, we can go about this in a way where we uh, <clears throat> try to pick and pick out the relevant, what we think is relevant information and put all that information together to form some kind of action or a plan. Practically impossible. That's not how you do things. Second of all, uh, we, we can try to take all that information together, wholesome, and try to put together, comprehensively understand it, and make a really make a decision from that comp trying to comprehensively understand everything about our situation that doesn't work either we don't have time for that we have to really only have time to take the information we have and make a decision from it and uh, so what is the solution well the thing is that we have to compare our situation to gener gen general models uh, for an example if, for those of you who have watched the show House, you know it's about doctors who have unique patients with unique kind of situations and they have to take the symptoms that they have and come up with something they totally didn't expect uh, as, a di as a diagnosis. And as you can tell, of course, the first uh, diagnosis they have is wrong, and usually the first several of them are. But the thing is that they usually find one that ends up working. And the thing is that's how we do with our situation. We have to diagnose our situation, take the information we have from it, find out the kinds of problems we're facing, and apply it. Sun Tzu's system strategy itself has nine basic mental models for nine basic challenges to give you nine opportunities that you basically have, whether it's creating momentum, finding the best opportunity, exploring that opportunity, listening, aiming, moving, claiming, understanding positions, and all that stuff breaks it down. And then even breaks down further into the specific things. That's what we're getting to in these videos. Now, uh, the thing is, though, as I was going back to house, it's about mental models, about models for viewing the situation, taking our situation, applying it to a decision. What is, you know, what's our diagnosis for our situation? Thing is, is um, we have to find the model that works, find the model that solves the solves our situation to make the right decisions. The thing is, though, is that we don't need perfection here. It's a lot like uh, really what you learn in high school chemistry. Uh, I remember my personal experience in elementary school, they end up teaching you, lost my train of thought, I, I kind of get distracted pretty easily, but anyway, um, <clears throat> in high school, in elementary school chemistry, they teach you basically that atoms whiz around around the protons and then the neutrons and the nucleus and whatever. Then in high school chemistry, they basically rip that information from you, teach you something totally different and complicated, and teach you this is how it really works. And then, after all of that, they tell you, by the way, this is not really how it works, possibly. It could work some other way. And then you get all mad because, like, what? Why did you do that to me when it might not even work this way? At least that's my, that was my reaction. But then the wisdom of truth comes in. And the reason why is because even if it's not exactly how it works, it works to make the right interpretations of how atoms will function, how they'll interact, and... Uh, really to make the right decisions about how sub subatomic stuff works. In our personal situation, we can make the right decisions even if our models aren't, our specific models aren't perfect. It's not just about having the general models, but specific models for understanding certain kinds of contacts and situations we face, uh, for understanding the specific information we get. So they don't, the mental models we use have to work, but they don't have to be perfect. They, they can, just like in 1.3, I talked about how it basically abridges the information we get. It filters out a lot of the information and only s uh, sorts the five key factors that we need. It can work, you know, really, a lot of times, mental models work just like that. It's about leading to the right decisions in the end. And I really stretched this last uh, challenge out a lot because this is one of those challenges that's really fundamental throughout the whole Warriors rulebook, not just this one place. It's really a universal kind of thing in the Warriors rulebook. Uh, the last challenge we face is that of communication. Rather than ending with an illustration, I'll start off with one. Uh, I was actually, you know, our fam my family gets together uh, on Sundays and we eat and uh, talk with one another. And somebody mentioned something, it reminds me of the show that I, well, actually most of us, all of us know the show. 
some of us watch it more than other, others and and so I remember an episode and to me I don't see how you can forget that episode but they, none of them remember that episode I was talking about that I was trying to mention and so I tried to mention the guest actor that was part of that key role that, that person said something about that reminded me of that person and for the life of me I couldn't remember the actor and I tried using general ways of describing but it just didn't work so anyway the thing is is that that's how communication is it's the challenge of communication um, really what holds us back is that we don't have shared terms that can represent and communicate the kinds of uh, challenges that we're facing that's a big problem thing is when you can have good communication flow you have accuracy of information it's not lewd and distorted too much uh, it makes communication a lot better and the thing is communication is important because a lot of problems in the world can be solved by better communication I think we can all agree on that um, but that's that's really the thing is better communication we don't have generic terms but Sun Tzu's Warriors Rulebook itself is the solution because for example we can talk about ground we can talk about ground in your personal life just as much as we can talk about as your professional life the different actors making decisions changing trends and stuff we can talk about all this different stuff in a lot of different areas because they're just general principles that apply everywhere and uh, with Sun Tzu's mental models we can communicate our situation in a very generic way leading up to the more specific ways of course we can communicate in, in different areas uh, standard terminology um, going back to my situation though all I had to remember was just two words the name of the actor and once I remember that not only would they know what I was talking about who I was talking about but they could also remember the variety of shows interviews possibly and uh, movies that person's been in a lot of different things just from two words and so uh, that's the power of communication right there that's the three basic challenges we face in gathering information and the opportunities that we have in those challenges. Until next time, which next time we'll be talking about interacting with people because information comes from people and we have to interact with them and know how to. Without revealing too much though, Mr. Balderdash signing out.